Hello, in this video I want to talk about Bison and Flex. I don't want to explain how Bison and Flex works. I rather want to give some additional information that is very helpful after you read this site that I suggested in a different video. This is going to be a very lame video. But on the other hand, this is barrier free because everything that I say is written down here. First, I want to talk about token and type. What is token and what is type? I myself had a very hard time figuring out why or when to use token, when to use type, because you don't need type all the time, but you need tokens all the time. And then you get this, uh, there is no type defined error. And I didn't know what to do. For a basic understanding, token and type do the same thing. Just that the token statement tells the compiler that this thing that we're dealing with here is coming from flex or is used by flex. And when you use type, then it's just the same thing, but for a grammar rule. So it just tells the type of the token. You can view a grammar rule as a token if you want, a token inside Bison. And this also needs a type. And this is what you tell it with type. And when do you actually use need the type? This is, here's an example. Um, we don't need to type here. We have defined an S value token, which is used in this rule. And this rule is used in this rule line. We don't need a token, uh, we, sorry, we don't need a type definition here. Why? Because we're not using the return value of a rule string of this thing. But let's go a little bit down in my examples here. But now in this case, we try to output the content of rule string. And now if we don't have this type definition here, we get the information that there is no type definition for $1, which means there is no type definition for rule string. I was a little bit confused because, okay, there's string here. This goes to rule string. So the compiler should actually know that this is basically the same, but apparently it doesn't. So this is the reason why you definitely need this type definition here. And as explained in the text a little bit above, this is implicit for this, right? And in this case, this dollar dollar equals is kind of equivalent to a return statement. And if you view this rule string, this grammar rule, if you view the grammar rule as a function and this as a return statement, then as always in C or C++, you know, you need a return type. And this is what you define with this one. Although, of course, this is not a type, right? This is just the variable that you defined in the union statement. But implicitly, you tell it what type it is. And as in my text for completeness, remember that you don't need a type statement here. Why? Oh, by the way, see the difference? We don't use the string here on top. We use the string here on the bottom. This works fine because we already defined token string and said, yeah, that's actually from type car pointer, which you don't see here. This is just from the examples from this site. Okay, that brings us to the next one. If you want to, we go to flex now. If you want to define a rule with braces like this, like this rule, then the compiler, if, if you want to use flex on this, flex will already tell you that there's something wrong here, too many braces. And you wonder, why do you, you have too many braces? You have one closing brace, brace and one opening brace, and this stuff in the middle is quoted, so there should be no problem. But there is a problem. So the solution is to escape the brace. That was very short. Let's go to the next one. I got some segmentation falls. Change the content a little bit. Once again, there are some examples here in aquamentos.com. They use car pointers and they use string stuff and allocating of allocation of strings. And I got some segmentation falls at runtime using that. And this is a way how you can reproduce the segmentation fault because first we want to reproduce the error. We have this rule here. We return a number, which is an I value, which is an integer, and we return and we have a string, which of course should be an S value. And when you compile that, everything works fine, and then you will run it. And then on some point, this rule will be executed, and then you get a segmentation fault. The problem for that is, oh, I don't even need to write that because it's written down here. The problem is that this stuff is implicit for this stuff. And what it means is that you return the first thing that's coming here, which is a number, which is an integer value. But because we said that the type of the rule and string rule 
sorry, rule number and string, we said that this is a car pointer, but actually an integer value is going to be returned. The integer value returning is fine, but then the compiler or the program tries to reference it, to, to, to interpret it as a car pointer, and this re results in a segmentation fault. What I want to say, therefore, is if you get a segmentation fault at runtime, check your car pointer values or your, in general, your pointer stuff that you're returning and make sure that all this stuff is returned correctly. In this example, you would need to use this one to return the string or going a little bit down, return a favorite string that you want and take new space for that. Okay, let's skip over to the next one. Not skip over, let's go, go on. To the next one, uh, we want more sophistic, uh, sophisticated error messages, and this is the magic word. Just um, you define your union at some point and just put the error verbus part above, and then you get really nice error messages like expected a plus but got a closing brace. So like C style messages, pretty good. And that's it for this video. If I, blah, 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 that was really fast. That's it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave me a comment. If you have any suggestions, leave me a comment. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Oh, and one last comment. I'm, in this video, I use a different, a very different setup for my sound and my video quality itself. I would be really happy if someone else could tell me if this is better or worse or if it's not nice to listen to because of oversampling and stuff. Maybe you have a different setup for your speakers that I don't have, so I don't figure out if something is wrong. So if you want, leave me a comment on that one.